crown champions in February of the League Cup. Uh, just moments away from kickoff here at Valley Parade. Hullaport, good contingent actually for that away end, coming back down at the M62. Defensively, since the turn of the year, in fact, the championship last season, they've been difficult to break down of Hull. That's, that's their strength, isn't it? Yeah, the three at the back, and obviously, we, we your wing backs, you know, pushing on. Um, obviously, a great, great point on Saturday against Preston. Said to Michael earlier on, probably, <clears throat> I think, two shots on target, which probably would, would concern yeah. the manager a little bit. But if you're not, con he'll tell you, if you're not conceding at, at the other end, you know, then you've got half a chance of winning football matches. And it well, may not be a great way to tease the game, but they failed to score in 21 championship games last season, it did, did Hull. So that, that's where their issue is. Yeah, and it's going to be even harder without Keen Lewis Potter. I was a yeah, massive, massive, right. massive fan of him last year. How, how many opportunities, assisted goals he got. Um, so you have to replace that. But it's going to take time. We spoke to Mark before. He's bringing players in. Shot over lads, he's brought players in. We can't just expect it to click. It doesn't. You've had four or five weeks of pre-season. This is another opportunity for them to try and score goals. But I think in the league, shot over lads, he will be delighted. Four points from two games. You couldn't ask for much more. Does this become a bigger game for Bradford and Marquis because of what happened at Barrow and the, the, the way that frames the start of their season? Yeah, listen, Mark will be desperate to get a result tonight. Um, and that's the thing, and, and financially as well, it's very, it's very rewarding. Look at what happened in 2013. So they'll be thinking that. Even the whole city manager will be thinking that. You know, yeah, you get a big team in the next round, and then you don't know where it's going to take you. Yeah, if I actually, we haven't really touched on that financial side of it. That's the first time we mentioned it, but it's hugely important. Definitely, and, and, and I said earlier, Bradford City since 2013, I think they've got to the third round once and the second round once so it's been disappointing for them and and it can it can give you an opportunity it can kick start when you're going through periods in the season this for bradford the would, would have wanted a better start one point from two games but this can sort them give them a little bit of leaf it breeds confidence and if you're a goal scorer or whatever it is as a footballer you want to play games the fringe players might get an opportunity so you grab it with both hands our carabao cup coverage starts now here on sky sports bradford against hull live from the university of bradford stadium or valley parade to you and me here's lee hendry and seb hutchinson yes thank you mark a derby of distance but one that feels relatively local for hull city whose traveling support are used to a long journey that's for sure these are two clubs who've had quite the journey in the last 25 years who've both tasted the top flight both tasted cup finals and both have a taste for promotion this season disappointing campaigns last time round but optimism for the road ahead at the start of the season and although a return to high divisions is their ultimate ambition they wouldn't mind a good couple of Well, Mark Hughes sticks with eight of the starting 11 that somehow lost to Barrow at the weekend, including the whole city skipper from last season, Richie Smallwood. There's a debut for new loan signing, Scott Banks, while both substitute goal scorers from the weekend, Jake Young and Andy Cook, start from the off. As for Hull City, seven changes from the stalemate against Preston with a senior debut in goal for 20-year-old David Robson, a first Tiger start for teenage signing Paul Coville, and first starts on the shot arm and I'd say for Malik Wilkes and Randell Williams. Well, Lee, your thoughts on the new loan signing, Scott Banks? Hey, big, big evening for the young man, Scott Banks. And obviously he's got to come out the trap spiral and he's been bought in to do what he's done in the under 21s and under 23s and that's supply creativity and goals and i'm pretty sure he'll be doing that this evening those on two fan well didn't really work out from a watford and the lads have touched on what a big player he can be always question marks on his fitness levels if they can get that up to scratch more minutes this evening he will be a big player and a big player this evening Well, Mark Hughes, a shot out of the lads, say. Players of the same generation, although Mark Hughes' his generation spanned a fair long time. Likewise, his managerial career, but now in League Two with Bradford. 17 years since these clubs last met. A season in which they were both in the same division. The first season when the third tier was named League One. A division that Bradford are hoping to return to and one that Hull are hoping to avoid. Tonight, though, 
is about the League Cup and a place in the second round. The first round of the Carabao Cup, a tie of two cities, UK cities of culture, future and past. And as far as the home club is concerned, Lee, one you know very well from your brief spell here. Yeah, definitely. It's a massive turnaround for the football club. They have to start making big steps forward. There's no doubt about it. They've been stood still for quite some time. They've got a new manager in, the fall, in Mark Hughes. And I'll tell you what, I feel that he will take them place. He does need time, that's for sure. But we know as fans, they want it straight away, and unfortunately it doesn't happen. He's built a new side here, lots of new players. And I think there'll be exciting times ahead. Plenty of changes, but plenty of senior players in this whole side today. And they'll look to stretch this Bradford defence, who they get to win this season. A draw, the opening round of matches against Doncaster, and then a dramatic defeat to Barrow at the weekend when they equalised in added time, only to concede again in added time. Hopefully not too damaging a result. And we'll see if Hull try and take the initiative early on here. A team that like to play a back three as well. Joe's trying to play that ball down the line. And Malik Wilkes on that side. Hull City, a man who's had injury problems and finally getting a start and a shot on the lads. I think there's lots of players out there that really have to stake a claim. And shot on the lads, he obviously bringing new players in also. I want to take Hull City back to the Premier League. With small steps. We saw the first big tackle there by Jacob Greaves, the talented centre half for Hull. Very noisy away contingent here, just below us. See the Hull City fans making this journey for this derby, 70 miles. Oh, it's fantastic, the gantry is actually bouncing, isn't it? I can feel myself just jumping up and down, it's brilliant atmosphere. Yeah, the camera bouncing up and down as well. Shotava lad say plenty of experience of playing in Scotland. This is his first taste of English football, his first full season. Glockner. Jones, McLaughlin coming in for Figueredo, one of the new signings in the centre of that defence. The Hull, right for the side who like to keep the ball. Hull likewise, although we don't know too much about this new Hull side this season and how they'll play overall. More than a draw so far in the championship. You know, there's one thing that they're certainly looking to play is in that sort of back three with a back five at times out of possession. That means one of them. Two midfielders at times will have to get on the ball, filtering it into wide areas, making sure that the fullbacks are playing high up the pitch, just giving them plenty of width. It's a great formation to play. Here's McLaughlin again. It's a bit of a press here from Bradford. Um, Jacob Greaves, good on the ball. And a touch here for David Robson, only 20 years of age, young Welsh Academy player. Between the sticks, big night for him as well. Ingram, the number one, put in the squad today. Long ball from McLaughlin, looking to stretch Bradford already. And after that period of possession, it's comfortably in the arms of Harry Lewis. Tough on a free from Southampton. Big goal for Bradford. Already, as you can see, they're trying to play that big switch, aren't they? That diagonal always on. It's offering that support and width in wide areas. I'm pretty sure that. Similar from Bradford. Looking for Chapman with that long ball. Halliday comes to nothing in the end. Mocked up by Robson. Here's Williams. Trying to work out who will play right wing back the hole today. It's Williams who's got the nod in that area. And cut in on his left foot from that side. You can see already that the front four, if you like, Cody might drop into little pockets of space. He's, he's got three balls to go and try and find pockets of space, getting behind his back four, Bradford. 
there's the switch again. Over to that side where Williams is. Drops to Wilkes. Back to Williams again. Nash waiting for the cross in the middle. Two fan. He's already popular with the whole fans. Turkish international is two fan again. A talented player on the ball. Played in all of their games so far. Two fan once more. This is a playmaker in that midfield. Here's Cannon. And it goes to Williams. And arriving in the penalty area. The hole, the defended there. Right right now. There's lots of movement and again just trying to get it into the area where they can put delivery into the box. And it's all about attacking midfielders getting forward. One of them midfielders going and joining in, making overloads, causing problems. making changes in that midfield but as for Bradford and Mark Hughes a big name managerial signing that's got the fans excited around here and certainly here for the long haul if he can really up for the challenge trying to take Bradford back up the leads again and they've been up and down the leagues Halliday taking that throw for Bradford, who are under pressure already here from Hull, trying to impose themselves on their hosts. It's all about weather in the storm, isn't it? And in the home side, it's getting back in your numbers, making it difficult, not letting Hull City have it their own way. They are the favourites here, there's no doubt about that. Callum Elder playing left wing back today. So Manash, the Iranian center forward tonight has been played in that position at the start of this season Valadze Cannon helping that forward an all hole at the start of this game McLaughlin into Tufan now time to turn there Wilkes have made a run forward Greaves. Matthew Jones. That ball forward. Sayed Manash. Such a hard worker up front, doing enough to keep the move alive here. Williams. And they look towards the referee there. A challenge on Covill. Referee today, Seb Stockbridge. I can't even get my own name right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that then. <laughs> well, Carver just gets into the box and he doesn't make any reaction, does he, to even inflict that it is a penalty, so it's definitely not from me from this angle. Yes, Chief Smallwood does come in and try and block that effort, but it's definitely not a penalty. Seen off another attack there, Bradford. Quick winning that ball in the air. Quick. They're to beat up much so far. They're still early stages, of course. Manish hold on to that ball. Of a host of new signings for Hull this season. Turkish league influence. Looking to stretch Greaves. He's an absolute handful. You can see whether he wants it into his chest. He will protect it. Just showing that he's willing to make them runs into channels, which enables Bradford to play high up the pitch. And they can play silky football that Mark Hughes wants. Well, Halliday. Back again. Chance now to play it in through Smallwood. Now then, what can they do here with Young? Young using that little reverse ball to right now. It will be a corner. Last chance for Young to really get on the ball there. And working back hard. Wilkes. Yeah, it's excellent. It's all about full backs getting forward, offering support. And that. Jake Young, that option to go inside. He wants to take a shot on, or he's just got the option of just putting right out just in to a wide area where he can put delivery into the box. Got went up from the back as well. Platt is in there waiting for the cross. Chapman plays it in. 
the most convincing of clearances from holding that defense and young with a turn he looked sharp when he came off the bench against barrow and he got in the score sheet as well just five minutes after coming on yeah, really did he scored an excellent goal didn't he right in the top bin so smallwood against his old club with this corner for bradford sent into that near post from behind by williams they have another chance here Smallwood once more. There goes the corner from Smallwood. Hole managed to get it away. His way back out to Smallwood again. And he's still forward here for Bradford. Halliday, can he get to that? He can. Stretching for it because he's the free kick for the challenge on Wilkes after Bradford's first real attack of the game. Well, just turning defense into attack and that's what you can do when you've got the likes of Wilkes and he's got the strength and the pace so go and drive this whole city forward loving the movement in that front line at the moment it's all about getting the supply first start under Fatavalazzi for the ex leads man in front Hull will start their build up from the back again sides have had a good run in this competition in recent years and now this season it's an interrupted season Wilkes and Williams bursting forward Manash is in the middle and Elder is free at the back post it never reached him is Wilkes now to send it in oh Critchlow's missed it rescued the situation in the end but all come coming forward again Just ran out of space in the end, but a lucky break there for Romane Gritschlow. Yeah, he's excellent. The movement, the pace, and the, the way they're approaching. Again, Williams just getting on the ball. Wilkes whipping a ball into that real dangerous area. Gritschlow has to deal with it two times of doing so, but just clearing the complete danger away. Well, the whole fans in full voice. And they try and hit Cook with this one. The top scorer of the last two seasons for Bradford City. And there is Cook. And he's penalised. He's not sure why. That's what he thinks of it. And that's all about his game. Andy Cook, he's putting himself about making himself being physical I think this is why he's asking but it's clear his elbows leading to McLaughlin well Bradford hosting this game and they haven't won a League Cup tie at home since they beat Leeds yes Leeds at home in 2014 All played forward by Jones with Harry Lewis who never made an appearance for Southampton in the Premier League Rydell right under pressure Pritchlow away picked up by Cannon now Tufan Greaves Cannon again scooping it forward to Elder see Cannon's the one that's going to be the one that's venturing forward showing the energy to find just sitting in a more defensive position where he's capable of getting on the ball and making oh, really tick so high up the pitch already that's why that patient approach from the back three just switching from right to left Williams to run with the ball Williams bringing that wing back roll 
Try some defensive discipline as well. One back by Tufa. Didn't pick the pass. Halliday. By Chapman. Haven't really got Banks into the game yet, so. Dominating that area. And that's why the possession stats really do speak for themselves. And I think they're just trying to work areas, they're just being patient. So far, plenty of touches for Andy Cannon. Second season with the club. There's the switch from Greaves. Williams, well marshalled by ride out. And Cook, not lost anything in the air so far. Able to get it back, dominating the ball in this first half. <laughs> Tufan has already got a song with the away support. Three games in. McLaughlin looking for Williams. Right out. He's getting as far as Colville. Cannon. Gets it across to that left hand side or too much. On it for Elder. Well, again, just the front line of Hull City. As Williams is pushing so far forward. So he'd manage that almost a 10 at full 10 at times because he just dropped into spaces. So many options to pick out. He's just drawing the back four out, which is allowing almost a spare man at times for Hull City. Parade hosting this Yorkshire Derby, this distant Yorkshire Derby. No goal so far, still early stages, of course. And Bradford have looked really well organized in their formation, just looking at them from here and really getting back into a well oiled structure. That's why we haven't really seen any clear cut attempts. I think at times you can give you know, a little bit too much respect, but there are times when. You have to trigger, you have to go. Otherwise, it's going to be a long evening. Here's McLaughlin. Plenty of touches for the back three. Oh, and the left footed Jacob Greaves. Left footed centre half. Everybody's after one. It's too fast. Robson, Critchlow, moving that one well. So far, building out from the back leg. And that's the way that Mark Hughes wants to play. He wants to touch on his stamp of what he wants out of this Bradford City side, and that's how he wants them to play. You see that already, that Lewis is just looking for someone that he can play into where they can start that attack. They're on the attack here. Wilkes went for the snapshot. Should have fed his striker instead, perhaps. But they come again, and Wilkes is in the middle. Too much on that. They claimed by Lewis. But building up from the back. Well, that's what it's all about. It's building up. It's having them touches. And I think it certainly does explain that why Hall have had so much possession. It is coming from the back three. Back five, if you want. Quite happening for Banks so far in the early minutes. And Greaves so impressive on the ball. The young defender, the young left footed defender, 22 years of age, Jacob Greaves, whose father was a player at the club as well. Two fans. Elder next to him, but you fancy to play this into the penalty area. 
So Edmanesh is in there. Behind Jones and Greaves and McLaughlin, all three centre halves forward for Hull. Looking for a good delivery from Tufan. And it goes from Tufan and all the way through. Well, it's not the best free kick in the end from the Turk. I was going to say, it's not actually the worst one either. I just really, for one of them, Hull City does engage and actually goes towards that near post. It was very static as that ball came across. That ball has come across to Young. Idal bursting to get on the overlap. Here is Young. Right out. Spent again. He had going backwards. Young, who has looked bright so far. Chapman with an nutmeg on two fan. Lebe works it wide. Banks. Plays it in away by McLaughlin. Koval trying to turn. Wilkes somehow making that ball stick and winning the free kick as well. And that's brilliant from Wilkes. He's under pressure from every single angle. Just utilises his strength, his upper body, just to shrug players off and then just ride out the free kick. Really good build-up and approach play from Bradford just beforehand there. Must have been a sequence of maybe 20, 30 passes. Just trying to work the area, trying to get Harry Chapman on the ball in that little 10 pocket. Two clubs who finished in the lower half of the table last season, but yet, over the summer, talk of promotion. Trying to predict promotion in League Two or the Championship is not easy. No, definitely not. It really is a lottery, isn't it? And I do feel that for City being amongst the favourites of, of getting promotion, they need to. They need to start going up the leagues and making this club a bigger and better place again. I think the foundations are certainly set. It's behind the scenes and what we're seeing here, here already. I think it's all about having a patient approach. Free kick goes against striker that time, the Iranian. Alia Sayyad Manesh, who was on loan at the club in the last season, signed permanently for this one from Fenerbahce. Brooklyn. McLaughlin. Two fan. Cannon. Now Williams. Sayyad Manesh in the middle. Rooks joining him. Here's Williams again, Cannon, and still Cannon, and still keeping the move alive. Williams, Tufan, oh, he's got the lucky break. That's a goal for Hull. Whether it's given to Tufan or not, we'll see. But he won't care, Hull won't care. They're in front in this Yorkshire derby. Oh, wow, it's some finish as well. And I'm not going to lie, I must have seen him do that five or six times in the warm-up. It's just got these fans way off their feet, but this was special, it really was. Patient, Cannon did brilliant driving into the box. And then it just comes back out, they re-engage it, re-light the fire. And I tell you what, the strike, well, it's first class, yes. Harry Lewis does get a touch to it, really good save, forcing it onto the bar. Really unfortunate to come off the back and into the goal because it was a super strike, a super save. And just really unfortunate for Lewis in the goal, but great goal from a whole perspective. And as you mentioned, Lee, you've seen him do it before. He almost scored for the club already this season from a similar position, hit the woodwork. Has scored from the penalty spot already this campaign. And now Cook causing a few problems. And there were some appeals in there. He's not happy, the Bradford forward. And they were both at it, where Andy Cook's just trying to get a hold of the ball. Oh, and get a 
shot off. But they will nevertheless go down as an own goal from Harry Lewis. Unfortunate, as keepers always are in those situations, but it was an excellent strike and a good tip initially. But the result is 1-0 to home. It was a really good save, but you say you hit the target and work the goalkeeper. There's lots to like about it. Here's Coville. And there's an overload in the middle and the wrong option from the young American. Well, if Coville just gets his head up, Williams is really going at it on the right-hand side in acres of space. Just tries that outside of the boot pass. It's meant to be inch perfect to get there. <laughs> just getting out of trouble there, Lewis. But the whole fans, they love Rosan Tufan already. And I was just going back to the warm-up where, I'm not joking yet, six times I must have seen him striking the ball into the top corner. I just did, almost the same there. It's Halliday. And Bradford respond here, just stopped there, waiting for the free kick. Well, Greaves is going to pick up a yellow card for the little tug on Chapman. why he's been booked because Harry Chapman just trying to break away and to set an attack trying to switch the plate just getting the old tug of the shirt Harry Chapman one of the new signings for Bradford and he could play all across the area behind the striker keeping the line here Holt short and Smallwood helping it on and that's well left actually in the end by Elder. Valancey will be delighted with the start never played in English Cup competition but played in Scottish Cup competition Georgian I've been really impressed with the start they've set their stall out haven't they just repeat that repeat that again Lee this kind of just put it behind for a corner. Yeah, sorry about that. Well, I was just going to uh, sing their praises, but we'll come back to that. They're just trying to play out from the back here. Really a little bit too easy, isn't it? And it's just a real bad pass. Back into that danger zone. It's resorted to the corner from Cannon. So a gift of a corner for Bradford to be taken by Scott Banks. And it goes from Banks. And Decent delivery as well towards that near post. He's going to have another chance, or at least Bradford will from the other side. I'll tell you what, the delivery is absolutely first class. It's in the area, it's on the money, but there's no movement in there. Someone's got to be getting across that near post. So, man, this just ends up clearing that away relatively easy with no pressure whatsoever. Smallwood hangs that one to the back post. Absolutely nobody there. And behind for a goal kick so Bradford with work to do here trailing to Hull City and for Mark Hughes who won this competition three times as a play had to remind a journalist in the pre-match press conference of that who said two <laughs> <laughs> well I think he'd be relatively happy I mean obviously the goal that was conceded was from outside the box but they've looked organized yes they've sat back as you'd expect and then just you know, about getting into the game you can't fault the strike, can you? You can't do an awful lot about that. And Wilkes. He's got the ball up well so far for Hull. It's by Williams. Chapman. Robson collecting the ball. Other scores from around the grounds tonight. And First busy night of Carabao Cup action. Wilkes tries to control the ball there. And the way Bradford City lost that game to Barrow at the weekend, Lee 
How difficult are those sort of defeats to take? They really are. They, you know, you want the game to come round, the next game to come round thick and fast, but obviously you're coming up against stronger opposition this evening in the whole city. The league above, the two leagues above. And it's all about the response from the players. You can't just sit still. It's early on in the season. I do feel that Mark Hughes will get it right here at Bradford City. I did say it's all about being patient. Credit to Mark Hughes before this saying he was always going to play a strong side for this. It felt like a good cup run helps your league form. It's very true as well, isn't it? I think you, know, you can get everyone on side. It's almost getting the players game time. Lots of teams do change and make a wholesale of changes, but I totally agree with him. Yes, it's a long season, there's lots of games, but you've got to look at the financial aspect of it as well. Important part, both sides putting out strong sides tonight. Here's Coville. Two fan. Williams wants the ball on the right and he's going to get it now. What can Randall Williams do from here? Fires that one into the near post and well held actually in the end by Lewis. Yeah, well, Randall Williams just having a 1v1 situation, flashes that across. And one of them centre forwards moving. Scored for the club yet, Randall Williams. Bradford do have plenty of creative players in this side. Chapman and Banks can really make something happen when they get on the ball here. Here is Chapman. And Young. And Young trying to test the young goalkeeper. That's probably one thing they haven't done enough of, Bradford, knowing there's a debutant between the sticks. Definitely not. And when they're getting into the final third, I've just seen Andy Cook just forcing an issue. You've got to get a few passes in the game, which enables them to play high up the pitch, which gives more options to carve and create opportunity. But Robson's not had nothing to do so far. Yeah, first effort on target for Bradford. Home side. They want a lot more. See what David Robson's made of. Jones. Now Williams. Helped on by Cannon. Over will chase this. Critchlow helps it out. The first live Carabao Cup game on Sky Sports, but tomorrow on Sky Sports Football, they've got Sheffield Wednesday against Sunderland. Two massive clubs who found themselves in leagues lower than they would wish, but they fight it out tomorrow evening. Smallwood. Now looking for Young. Jones read that well. 100th career appearance for Alfie Jones. He's excellent defending. He's known the dangers in behind him. Dif difficult for a defender to deal with them balls. It's all about clearing your lines. 15th straight game for Jones across two seasons. All Greaves firm fixtures in that defence recently. Critchlow. That's too much on that. Two left-footed centre-backs in the Bradford team. I'm not obsessed with left-footed centre-backs. I just... <laughs> There's just a lot tonight, Lee. Sure, Seb? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even left-footed myself. But Robson so far tested by one effort in that goal, and he'll be delighted about that. I just feel that Bradford are just making wrong decisions at times. It's to force the issue and that was a wrong decision there out of defense and can one take advantage here affected behind but mclaughlin with a loose pass well, opportunities like that where you're just picking up whole city's bad play that's twice now and that 
Five, ten minutes or so. Well, Jake Young, if there's any Bradford player who's looked sharp in this first half, he's the 20-year-old, but they've got a corner here. What can Banks do? Banks, lovely whip on that left foot once more. Away by Manesh, and he's got it back again. And a heavy touch following through. Bradford felt there should have been a free kick. I'm not going to get one, though. don't think the referee was looking at it. And he touched on the delivery from Scott Banks previous to that, and it's all about me beating that first man, isn't it? Said Manish, just on that front post area. I'd say he's the biggest player in that whole side, so it's all about getting it over that. And then I feel there could be so much danger. Said he's not the biggest, Lee. They've got two very tall players on the bench of Hull. Yes, Dupinian and Tete. Both well over six foot, so they need that. The second half is there. Always an option. Forward by Rydow. Glocklin. Jones linking up with Cannon. And that's good play from Hull. Sayed Manesh. We look to take on right now. Manish. Very busy and a lovely scoot. And here's Cannon. And this will be a lovely goal if Hull can finish it off. Coville turning into trouble. And it comes to nothing in the end. There's a gasp of disappointment from the away support. I thought they saw something special. And the home support Boyd by where that hits Williams. <laughs> yes. I wouldn't call him Boyd at the moment. <laughs> it was really good passage of play from Hull City, wasn't it? Patience, build up. Said Manish just been under so much pressure and showing what class and quality he's got. And one of those who had that half a season on loan, able to settle in. forward that's calmly done and appreciated again by the traveling fans Jacob Greaves flag going up but to go back to my left-footed centre-back obsession and Jacob Greaves not trying to sell him for Hull or anything but a very very talented defender with work to do here Lay off there by Cook and the challenge across by that man again, Jacob Greaves. Yeah, I'll just highlight a very good player that Hull City have on their hands as that left centre back you touched on, Seb. Well, they just keeping that ball in play. Smallwood. Halliday into towards Cook. Oh, that's a brilliant header from Cook and a brilliant equaliser for Bradford, their top scorer for the last two seasons, starting tonight and repaying the manager tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, this is a brilliant goal. They may talk about passages of play, patient, and it is. Just comes back out, they re-filter it, Halliday out of his feet, and just watch Cook, that half bit of movement, getting away from... McLaughlin, but as he comes back, he's only got one thing on his mind. He knows where the goal is, he doesn't have to look. And I tell you what, the perch is on the head up. Robson, absolutely no chance. It's a brilliant, brilliant goal. Well worked for Bradford City. I tell you what, Hawkins is getting nowhere near that, and that's what Andy Cook is all about. Supply service. And yes, a big applaud from his manager, Mark Hughes. His first goal at this stadium since January. But after doing the business off the bench at the weekend, he's done it from the start here after Hull have dominated much of this first half through possession. But Bradford finally testing the young goalkeeper. But I don't think even any senior goalkeepers would have saved that. Well, definitely not, and that's what Andy Cook is all about. 
really is, he's a handful. Just them little bits of movement forward and back. And strikers do really well. He does it well. He depends on that. He's not even looking at the goal. I'll tell you what, it's not an easy thing to do as a centre forward. It's just getting that movement right and making sure you're getting the purchase on the header, which he does. And the goalkeeper, no chance whatsoever. This angle might just was a better view, but it's the movement and then the head of the guile into that far corner. Really good goal. There's something lovely to watch about a header like that, isn't there? Maybe not for whole fans right now, but beautiful sight. Ilya. Bradford Boyd, Chapman. Chapman shots. Holds that one though, there's Robson. That's amazing, isn't it? What a goal does, and all of a sudden confidence is oozing. There's movement, there's players getting forward. It's Chapman getting that shot from a real tight angle. Lots of positives now from a Bradford City perspective. And Halliday getting forward down that side as well. Cook lurking again, and here is Cook pinning McLaughlin. And Cook winning the corner. That's excellent from Andy Cook. He wants it into his feet where he will turn, he will try and bring players into play. Well, they've been racking up these corner kicks of Bradford. They've already shown with their goal that they're useful in the air. And some of the deliveries have been useful. Just yeah, they really have. I just wonder whether someone's going to get across that near post. Good plants lurking in there. Set up there. Critchlow as well. Thanks, delivery, Critchlow. Can't quite get to that one. Trying to keep it alive, Bradford. Smallwood. It's held back in again. Look a bit shaky here, Hill. Desperate for the whistle to go there, but it wasn't coming. Chapman sends it back in there again. And they missed it again, Hull. Pretty shaky with those balls into the box. Yeah, really nice. So when you have set plays, you to get something out of them. It's all about the deliveries in. This one just goes back at Young's trying to put it back into the danger area. And there's so many Bradford players. Smallwood. Nice flat corner. Robson got something on that. It's going to be another corner. We're into double figures now for corners for Bradford. Well, it's a big hand from David Robson. He has to come and make sure that he gets something on, gets it right. He does. He's at full stretch. They play another corner. To that six yard box again. It's taken short. Chapman. And inside is well left. Oh, they worked it well. Bradford in front, they turn it around, and it's two for Cook. What a day for him! And the set piece working in some style for the home side. Well, I have to question Mark Hall City here because do they just switch off expecting that ball to come in? And it's quality, it really is. Chapman ball through into the box, just a little run through the legs from Young. And who's on the vicinity? Yes, it's that man, Andy Cook. One man that you want on the ball. Eye for goal, making sure he hits the target. And I'll tell you what, it's a well worth goal, it really is. Hughes enjoyed that one, and so he should. One from the training grounds. And Andy Cook. Well, there were doubts about how much a party played this season when they brought in the Dane Oliver, who's a target man himself. But Cook reminding Bradford that he's the main man up front. I'll tell you what, it was a brilliant goal, wasn't it? And all of a sudden, what that goal's done for Bradford City, it's just raised the bar. I think at times they were sat back so much in that first half, in particular early on, just inviting pressure on. 
do look dangerous going forward. And all of a sudden, Hull fading towards the end of this first half. The championship side, don't forget, two divisions above their hosts. And into added time in what's been a busy end to the first half. Well, Cook hasn't touched the ball much. <laughs> I'll tell you what he has done, he's had two vital touches in this game. If you look at the top, left of the screen, that's why Bradford, the two one up, down to that man. One with his head, one with his feet. Right out, inside to Chapman, what an end to the half this has been from Bradford. You would think when they fell behind in this, the hole might pull away. Been anything but very impressive finish to this first half from the home side. Yeah, excellent. Really showing signs of confidence. That's what they need. Really impressive goal. Particularly young. I love the fact the little ball that rolled through his legs into the path of the cock. Some good signs, good response from Bradford City. Pressure this time, giving him less space to work as well. Good signs for Mark Hughes. As his first half was worn on, his input perhaps. Yeah, like I said, they defended well in their units. The goal was fantastic, wasn't it? It was a two fan strike, but you know, they did deal with a lot. There wasn't an awful lot that Drew Lewis has had to do really in the goal for Bradford City. Response, that's what it's all about, and that's what Mark Hughes will be over the movie. Oh, he's just pulled four or five kick ups <laughs> over that fight. Never loses it, does he? <laughs> he doesn't have to come on though. His side have turned this one around. It started well enough. Paul City, when Mozan two fan shot came off the goalkeeper, Harry Lewis, to give them the lead. But Bradford, impressive finish to this first half. Two goals. For Andy Cook, one with his head, one with his foot. For Mark Hughes, looking good so far in this Yorkshire derby. Half time, Bradford City two, Hull City one. Well, that's been a very enjoyable first 45 minutes here at Bradford with the home side coming from behind to lead 2 1 at half time. And the players we picked out pre-match, as if by Not magic. Bad, <laughs> Not bad. It's almost like the two of you know what you're talking about. <laughs> They've been really influential. Yeah, I mean, two fans. Look, we had probably like to see more on the ball. I think you look at the back, back three from them. This is his little bit of magic that we, we talk about. They're very patient, Hull City. They try and get the three get on the ball. Jake agrees into McLaughlin here. I like it. What I like from the centre half, middle of a three. Can he can he cut that midfield out? He does, and he can, and then gets on the ball. And now you're at the defenders. Randell Williams, your wing back. Yes, he's left footed, so he chops inside, tries to pick a pass out. He does. Then again, he goes for goal. I think decision making by Hulse here. And he can, he could just put the ball in the back box. He tries to pull it out. This one, great set. Obviously, look, they get four. Very, very fortunate. I mean, that's a Harry great Lewis. save. Isn't it's a, a magnificent save. save. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an own goal. I mean, how unlucky is that? You think you tip one You'd onto, be onto the back? You? You'd oh. be de devastated. You think of an own goal there. It was a, it's a, it great was a strike. sweet strike. A sweet strike. strike, but great save. Very unfortunate for, for Bradford City. What a header this is for the equaliser. Yeah, I love this. Love this. This is like off the uh, off the training ground as well. It's but the one thing about the whole city don't stop the cross. So the ball goes back out again and don't get close enough. And look what he just does. He just steps in front and then pulls away. And the pace is on the ball and it's an absolutely unbelievable header. He's been a handful. Unbelievable. And yeah. all, all half. Not had many touches, but he's kept working, yeah. working, got in his opportunities. And it comes a defender, you just get under it, you take one step, and the cook just went forward and came back, yeah. arches back. What a magnificent header that is. Because it, it looks like McLaughlin's got caught under the ball, but it's the movement of Cook that what, has, that and it, has on caused the, text the that, On the text, just a little one to shuffle and then come in behind. And because the pace is on the ball, he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to edit, edit hard, and he just directs it back in the top corner. Great this, is, and this is definitely off the training this ground. This is a training ground, man. Ah, this, this is brilliant. Great. I think they've had 10 corners and they put them in and, and to be fair to Hull, they're defending well. Plate short, Banks, brilliant into Chapman uh, over there and 
Andy Cook there, he's sweet, it's been done. Young, you think, go on, is he going to hit it? He's obviously heard, no, over. This is this is worked. There he is, Young. Go on, no, I'm there. Andy Cook, you're not taking it. One at the weekend off the bench, two tonight. Still 45 <laughs> minutes left. Lovely finish. He's been so influential for them, although he's had the fewest touches of any player on the pitch. As you heard Seb say, only 12, but two of them were very, very important. Mark Hughes is happy. Bradford lead 2-1. The second half is on the way. The heroes of the summer, they live the dream. What we've done for women and, and young girls that can look up and aspire to be us. And soon those stars will reconvene to compete with each other and light up your school. Drama of the Women's Super League. Starts Saturday, 10th September, live on Sky Sports. And there's a North London Manchester field to the opening weekend. Tottenham at home to Manchester United on the Saturday. Manchester City host Arsenal on the Sunday. At the Premier League this weekend, Manchester United go to Brentford for Saturday night. Football Super Sunday has Nottingham Forest first home game back in the Premier League and Antonio Conte returning to Stamford Bridge. And the first Monday night football of the season is at Anfield where Palace are the visitors. Second half is next. I'm Jennifer Walters. I'm a lawyer. I have great friends, demanding job, and a frustrating family. The transformations are triggered by anger and fear. Those are like the baseline of any woman just existing. Oh, bro, this feels like I'm gonna die. Yes. Yes. No, no! Marvel Studios She-Hulk, an original series streaming soon, exclusively on Disney+. Plus. Teams are back out, we're ready to go for the second half, and Hull have rung the changes. Lee and Seb will have the details. Yes, three changes for Hull, taking off Greaves and Jones in the centre of defence, and Tufan in the midfield. Figueredo, a new centre-back signing is in what looks to be a back four now with captain Louis Coyle also on a right back and the third man to come on Regan Slater in midfield you expect Slater to go where Tufan was Coyle to right back Figueredo at the center of defense with McLaughlin and there is McLaughlin clearing that ball away a change in shape for Hull Lee. yeah very interesting is it that I thought there might have been maybe a center forward coming on but into that back four. Lovely touch from Wilkes, looking to get away. Critchlow across, holding the player off there. Wilkes felt he was just shot to the ground. Well, from this view, Critchlow did really come across aggressively. I'm not sure he wins much of the ball. I think it's just because Critchlow gets in front of him, utilizes his body and strength. That's why he wasn't given. Oh, an early little moment there, but Critchlow covering quickly. Oh, looking to respond to the start of the second half. Slater bringing that ball wide to Williams. Coville's in there. It's going to run all the way through to Elder. The answer is no. But with that change in shape from Avaladze, he'll be hoping they can test Bradford again as they did at the start of the second half. Just lost their way towards the end of that first half. I just didn't feel there was anyone who was playing through the middle where you could go and hit and go and play off all the energy, all the nice touches, all the nice approach play. When you look at, was the Brad, Bradford goalkeeper tested enough? I don't think he was. Well, Andy Cook's certainly been a test for that whole defence. As with Figueredo there. 
Here's Platt. Critchlow. Playing that ball back. Some pressure again. Elder. Still fired up for this one, Bradford. Why wouldn't they be? McLaughlin. Mobile. Wilkes. That ball back for giving it away ultimately. No changes for Bradford in the second half. They're given away by Gilead. They won it back, and then they were hoping the referee wouldn't blow there, because Banks would have been away. Well, that would have been counter-attack at its best, just working that midfield area. Gilead, Smallwood, working really hard in there for the two midfielders. So this change and tweak in formation from Hull City. Here is Elder, the Australian playing that ball forward. To his Iranian teammate, to the Portuguese centre back Figueiredo. Manish calling for the ball, another day across. Cook, great strength from Cook, having a good night. Here's Banks to show what he can do in his debut for the club. He banks the ground in irritation there. Well, I feel he'll get a lot more ball in this second half, particularly with Hall going to a back four. I think when teams play a back five, wide men sometimes get shut out, get isolated, don't get enough ball. He will now for sure. So we might just see the best of that young man too. Halliday, strong break, and there's a strong challenge from Elder. Had to get that right. Lost by Cannon. Feels like we're going to have some second half here. So I have managed, and across comes Plants. No pulling out of tackles in this game. It really is frantic this second half. You just expect it to be levels of intensity. They have to get back into this game, so they have to change their style. So Manesh sending it in, and Lewis watching that all the way. It's a good pace to it as well. Really going out of play at the start of this second half. We like to see. It's Matty Platt picked up from Barrow for this season. Banks. Nice. And Cook, who's been quite the handful for the whole defence, and McLaughlin winning the ball off him that time. Has, hasn't he? And because he's limited in his options, he has to do something himself, which he does brilliant. Zedmanish keeping this alive for Hull, ducking inside as well, and fancies it to curl one. Got by Critchlow. Men arriving as well on the end of that. Chapman loses it. Frantic start to this second half. Cannon. Still Cannon. Figueredo. Wilkes. Centre back Figueredo stepping into midfield for now. Manish. This is head up again. Sends it in towards Williams too much of that. Which will give us a moment to look back at that incident not that long ago. Critchlow on Wilkes. And you just wonder if the referee had blown here. This is not much of a challenge from Critchlow. No, I know. I, I totally understand. And I, I can see why, but yes. If it was brought down, then he would have been having an early show, wouldn't he? That's for sure, because he comes right across Malik Wilkes. I feel it's the right decision. He gets his body in front, he's favoured to win the ball. Fair enough if he's a side on and he's next to him, but definitely not. It was the right call for me. And the right call in the eyes of Seb Stockbridge. Here's Figueredo. Cook. 
Cook. Smallwood. Halliday. Smallwood again over 70 games for Hull. And their captain last season. I'll tell you what, just in a passage of play there where Scott Banks was definitely through. Cook got hold of the ball. I think that's what we might see. This is what it's developing into a bit of a basketball match, isn't it? It's end to end. And that's because the fullbacks are still getting forward for Hull City, which leave themselves a little bit exposed. That's why. It's not really happened tonight for young Coville. Doesn't turn 20 till next year. Picked up from Forest Green in the summer. Just talking about wide men and side menish just going out into onto this left hand side rather than playing through the middle how much more effective he's been in the second half we've seen that strike that's flashed into an area a dangerous area that's what he's capable of doing here's cannon with some space driving forward sad menish thought about the shot slater lines one up sets it good chance here for hole williams Cameron couldn't get to that Pack got something on the clearance. Danger still not cleared for Bradford. Nice feet there for Wilkes. I'll tell you what, we've got a proper cup tie on our hands here. Say Edmanish. He's going to run to Williams. And then the shot from Wilkes. I said the word frantic before, but there's no other word to describe this second half. Yeah, it's been brilliant, home city. Really come out with some intensity. Just trying to work an opening again. Really good play. It feels pretty open. Duck that cross out it very well. Elder almost arriving on the end of it. And every player on this pitch giving 100 percent Yeah, the work ethic, you can't fault from both sides. Certainly when Hall City are on the attack, Bradford City not allowing them to anywhere near their goal. Things have come on City going around this ground. Obviously applies to both sides. But Wilkes looks towards the referee, not going to get that decision. Trying to bring it away here for Bradford. Cook. Can they get going here? Nice chance for Young to do something. There's the challenge from Elder. You don't have time on the ball in this second half. Yeah, Young's got to get over it. Drive into space and just slowing everything down that enables Hull City to get back. There's battles everywhere, tussles all across the pitch. But then Chapman couldn't link up with Banks. Crystal Palace Loney, Scott Banks, who played play for the senior side, was on the bench last season. The game against Chelsea, but most of his football played in the development league in the Premier League. Well, this is great that young players can come and learn their trade. Whether it be League One, League Two, Championship level, it's brilliant. Smallwood. Oh, thought that should have been a free kick. Instead, it's with Banks. And Banks does well. Halliday sends that ball in towards Cook. A nuisance again. What can do here? Twisting. Still has it, Young. He's done so well. Flashes across the goal in the end. Action at both ends. That was an excellent play. Just not giving up on that ball. Ends up coming right out to that left hand side. Just facing up his marker, which is Louis Coyle. Does really well defensively, but then Young doesn't give up the chase. It's always a difficult one for Banks just to engage and be on the same page as that ball flashed in Jake Young's home debut this evening the Bradford fans have been calling for him to start tonight after his impressive cameo it's Barrow the signing from Forest Green Platts and that time Wilkes left something on Platt now Wilkes when he was walking across Platt caught him on the face with his boot I think intentionally at first glance but he certainly caught him. Well, Platt's got to come across and just do what he does well, and that's 
kick that into Rosehead. Here's a call that Wilkes did just catch him. I think it's always going to be difficult for Wilkes because they're both going for the same ball. I think it was just that one there. We might have just trod on his ankles. Oh, it's the knee in the head, which he's obviously looking back to. Just have to be careful, don't you, with them challenges is that you're leaving something late needlessly. And Platt stayed down. Concussion checks as well with a caught in the head there. Brooks pleading his innocence in the incident. We'd like to think he didn't mean it, of course. See how Platt feels about it. He's probably going to be asked to stay off the pitch for now and get a proper check. It's the point that the referee's making to him. So, Platt's back on the pitch, allowed to continue. And Holt still to turn this one around. McLaughlin. Elder. Figueredo. And now off the bench, the captain. Coyle. The Slater. Thinking about the shots. And again, hangs it in there. Plenty forward here for Hull. And it was Platt's head in the way. Manish. Elder on the overlap. Elder sends it in, but again, it's too close to goalkeeper Lewis. Yeah, it's an easy one for Lewis. Right, running lots of possession in the second half. But it's a Bradford City. They're really looking old at the back and defensively look really strong. It's been so long since these two signs last met. 17 years ago it was, a 2-0 win at Bradford in 2005, back when you were playing, Lee. Although you weren't playing in that game. A long time ago. Nick Barmby was playing in that game, though. <laughs> he scored one of the goals. So did Dean Windass play in that game. Well, Lee Angol, who started against Barrow, replaces the man who replaced him last time out. So no goal for Young this time. Halliday down the line. Well, match that's. You can see why Bradford have been really effective when they've got into the final third. You can have all the possession you like, but not to try and cause problems. That's what they've done when they've got it into the boxes, which they've had plenty of touches and really look the more dangerous. We're not done yet for the goals. The whole will hope so anyway, and that's paid for by McLaughlin. And they're expecting the flag to go up, and it did go up in the end for Bradford. But how tight was this against Koval? Yeah, well, Koval did go originally, he makes his run, and he wants that ball played in there. You can see, I don't think he's offside. If you look at your far side, I'll tell you what, he's onside. It's the far side, right off, playing him on. Are talking of one of the big men to come off the bench for Hull, uh, Benjamin Tete. He's going to lead the line now, you would fancy. Sam Manish 
coming off and Tete, another no signed from Turkey. And a Ghanaian, Ghanaian international. With a chance of being at the World Cup for Ghana as well. They've signed some really interesting players, haven't they? Hull City, hoping the fact that they're going to start moving up the table. Holiday sending that in and just, just a little unsure at first. Robson wondering where that was going, but Halliday drifted away from Tete there. Who's actually not leading the line at the moment, he's out on the left. Here is Tete. McLaughlin. Spit that ball out on the right-hand side. At the moment, it's Colville through the middle. Interesting. Yeah, Tete coming out on the left-hand side, as you said. Whether that might change as the game goes on. It does look like Colville's playing through, directly through the middle. But there has been plenty of movement through the front line all evening. Hole here as Colville had to reverse that ball inside to Coyle. And a free kick to Bradford, they won't mind one of those. Figueredo signed from Nottingham Forest. Can you get to the, join them in the Premier League? Hoping to take hold there. And again, I think feel a, a really good signing from a New City perspective. You know what you're getting from Figueredo. He heads, he tackles, he has his heart on his sleeve. Certainly doesn't hold back as a defender. But winning that header. His chest from Tete. Elder. Sharp turn there. And then a foul from Banks. That's all the Bradford fans watching highlights of Scott Banks for this one. That's an awkward ball to deal with, and they look towards the referee. How yeah, much did Reinhardt leave on his man there in the penalty area in Williams? Ducking inside, trying to find Cook, but not able to do that. Slater under pressure, free kick from Chapman. With all the good bits of play that Bradford have, it's all about that final pass. This is the big switch of play from McLaughlin into that right area where Williams just collides. And it was a difficult one for him to get hold of. They look for the referee to unpick there in the space of a few seconds. And the right decision in the end. Well, Mark Hughes will be pleased inside that he's got to this point in the game and his side are leading. He's to make any changes at half time with what's going on out there. Chapman doing well. Hugh Halliday just away from him. Smallwood. And again, in a deeper role today than he has been this season. So important in this Bradford City side. I think he'll be a real big player this season. Smallwood. Strong play from Gillian, keeping this alive as well. What can Angle do here? They all look to the referee for handball. But the Stockbridge is not going to give it. Oh, well, I want to see that one again for sure. It's brilliant play from Bradford City down that left-hand side. Excellent work from Gillian. Jinking and jiving. Does really well, doesn't he? Let's even get it. Keep control of the ball into Angani, he just has that touch. I'll tell you what, it does look like there's a dive in the They're behind. driving forward here, Chapman! Oh, it was a big chance, and he's dragged it wide. Well, non-stop moments. Great bit of work here. Chapman filtering out to the right side, just gets slipped in. Tries to go back, does everything right going across goal. I just felt that that near post looked like there was plenty of room just to pass it into. Oh, it just killed the tie off. What a flow we have to this game now. End to end it feels. Either side will feel they can find another goal in this. Midway point of the second half as well. 
the words proper cup tie at the tip of my tongue. Oh no, I've said it. There you go. <laughs> it's not wrong. And Tete almost bursting through, and he's in here. Must be offside though. And the flag does go up. And Tete just coming to pick the pocket. Brad Halliday is just watching the ball rather than looking where his man is. He does well in the end. A little bit fortunate, isn't it? This is the handball. And goal gets the strike. I'll tell you what, I've seen them given. I know it's close range, but Sam Stockbridge has got a good view of the match of initial incident. Free kick. Foul on the industrious cannon. Covered a fair amount of ground to say the least, although all the players have tonight. No shortage of effort. Well, sometimes you come into these cup games and you don't know what you're going to expect, do you? Lots of managers do make lots of changes, but this has been brilliant. Mighty scores around the grounds. On a busy first round evening. Plenty of goals around as well. Look at Exeter. Cheltenham. Preston at Huddersfield. It's Hull. Coming forward again here. Huddersfield v Derby. Two sides pretty close to each other in the country. Figueredo under pressure. Just seen 1 1 on that score sheet, by the way, between Mansfield and Derby. Derby have now just taken the lead. Right now, giving that back to Lewis just in the nick of time. He can't sleep on this game. Slater. Coyle able to get forward. Plenty forward for Hull in the penalty area as well. Can they work it there? Slater. Almost out of play. Can't take your eyes off this one though, Lou. Nice connection. Both teams have really just laid down and They've got amongst it, haven't they? Now hold it. And here Toes. Rich Lowe across. Williams that time. Down that right hand side. Yeah, Randall Williams. He's a bit of live wire, hasn't he? He's always wanting the ball. He's always wanting to beat direct, positive. She was there. Whole corner. Everybody back for Bradford. Tete's one of those in the middle for Hull. Oh, missed by Lewis off the post. Hull so close to equalising. But still they come. Tete swings it in. Clear its head over his Slater. Being cleared away by Angle. That's excellent defending off the line there. It was Halliday that got the last touch. Stayed out. It was an excellent strike. McLaughlin. Elder. Picking up well here. Good move this from Hull. Cannon. Too much on it. But how close did they come here? They have to question mark. Lewis coming. Expecting he's going to win. He doesn't. It's Wilkes that gets the last touch by the looks of things. He just slides in. Two players there and then knee just protecting the goal from Brad Halliday. Brilliant. That's what you're on the post for. Well, they've already brought on one big man of Hull. They're about to bring on another one and another of their new signings. The Colombian Oscar Estepinian. But they're on the attack here again. It's Wilkes. This time. Yeah, they are knocking on the door. But Esther Pinion signed Premier Liga in Portugal. Vittoria Guimarães, she was their top scorer in that division. Left 
footed centre forward to replace Randell Williams. Estefinia and Tete and Wilkes. That is a front three and it's pretty hot to handle. They're on four. Yeah, well, they're having a go now. Wilkes will go out to that right hand side where Randell Williams was, which go through the middle, give him something to hit and go and play off. And no sign at all that Hull have been taking this game lightly, lightly really, with Norwich on the horizon at the weekend. Here's Tetter. Elder. Figueredo, with time on the ball. Coyle. Looking for Tete, Halliday's header. Bradford ready to pounce on the counter. Getting numbers forward as well, sitting back and defending their lead, Bradford. I was going to say, he's getting to that stage where he's stick or twist and still try and put himself forward. When you sit back, you're just inviting pressure, but they're not doing that. Oh, that's a chance from behind, must be a booking. No chance of really getting the ball there. I think it was Gillian. Well, there's a driving run through the midfield from Cannon, who's been a live wire in that midfield. Gillian, no way he's getting away with that one. The man in his second spell at the club. Coyle sending it forward. Get a run by McLaughlin. Shot from Figueredo on the swivel. Elder. Tete. He's giving it away. Can angle. Keep this move alive. That'll be a free kick. And the whole fans in front of us and all the whole players up in arms. Well, you can see why, because it's Angle's big touch. Away from and Slater, I think it is, it comes across. <laughs> That's why they want to get on with things and the touch away, he's not got control of the ball. That's why they're furious. It's just interesting to see at what point Bradford do maybe go into a defensive shell. To see this one out. It's yes. to manage the time. Yeah, it's managing the game now, isn't it? And I'm sure there'll be a couple more substitutes coming on. It's whether they go defensive. They'll keep playing on the front foot. So a double change for Bradford City. Interesting the temptation just to say City in this game. <laughs> Ryan East who started in midfield, centre midfield with Smallwood. He's going to come on and join Smallwood now. Sutton, another midfielder. It's not really happened in the end for Harry Chapman in terms of having too many chances. He had that brilliant opportunity to probably put this game to bed. It wasn't to be for him. Some disappointment for the man signed, the free from Blackburn. See where Levi Sutton comes in. If they're just going to have a deep midfield three or a defensive midfield three. Let's see. <laughs> keep it in on that side hole. Could just about. But it's a goal kick in the end. Bit of frustration maybe creeping in for Hull here. We are getting to that stage in the game where the clock is ticking. All slain is to Pinion. Very close to cutting that out from Lewis. Hull. 
played their cards. McLaughlin. Cannon. Elder. Oh, a slip from Critchlow. Got away with it there, Bradford. It will be a corner. I'll tell you what, Critchlow does brilliant to just readjust from that delivery in from Callum Elder. We've worked this left side really well in the second half, and it's like the movement from the midfielders getting forward overloads, and then what on earth. Critchlow does well just to be on the floor, get the contact away from goal. Can't just get anything in the way. So, against Slater. Holt searching for an equaliser later on. He's well headed away for a throw in. numbers forward here the away side to find a goal a quarter of an hour or so it's to Pinyan Slater McLaughlin good run from Elder it took a while to get to him and it took too long to get to him to give me a chance to mention our other live game from the Carabao Cup this week another round one tie Sheffield Wednesday against Sunderland, two of the country's biggest clubs, competing the first round of this competition, 7 p.m. tomorrow on Sky Sports Football. For Shota Arvaladze, his first taste of League Cup action in England. He is very close to coming to a premature end. Field area with Ryan East and Levi Sutton coming on. Looks like they've just matched the three up in that midfield with Slater, Cannon, Coville just playing in that little 10 pocket. It's all about defending gamely now. They're doing just that. Being disciplined. Mark Hughes about 10 minutes away. What would be a cup shock? Yeah, well, this is what he wants at the football club. He wants to see success. So he right to have a smile on his face as well. And Hall is still pushing forward, dominating lots of ball. Six percent possession. It's just when Bradford do get on the ball, they just have to be a little bit better. Have to work areas. Just as I said, managing games now. the final 10 minutes and we can say that knowing that even if Hull were to equalize we don't have extra time here's Banks driving forward options left to right looking to curl one but one held by Robson well he did just open up for Scott Banks he's seen his name in lights rather than slipping that ball out to the left hand side to the end goal who I felt was in a much better position. Would have been a way to announce himself, though. Now the Nestor Pinya trying to steal him behind, but Lewis was quick off his line. And solid in goal. I won't mention the ball bouncing off him for the own goal, but besides that, he's been brilliant. Oh, excellent, yeah. Come out engaged, didn't he? Just, around, just making that powerful running behind. When you see your goalkeeper coming out and being on the edge of the box. Richler. It's Slater. Ronaldo has it for Bradford. A good balance as well. And he wins a very popular free kick. The Valley Parade. Yeah, it's excellent work from Jan Gold. 
is they work it. It's just a tight area. He's got two bodies, two centre midfielders around him. Something at his heels. Might just relieve a bit of pressure. It's officially known now as the University of Bradford Stadium. It's rocking right now. They hope to see their side through to the second round. As it happened often in recent years. All held tight, committing a lot of bodies forwards. Appeals from the fans behind that goal, not really from the players. Good header in there from East. kick as well Tete frustrated yeah understandable Halliday is always going to win it and Tete is just trying to get his body there isn't he and he's clever from Halliday he knows he's going to get fouled he just needs to get contact on the ball which he does these are moments in the game when I talk about managing games it's running the clock down frustrating the opposition I'm pretty sure that man Mark Hughes will have got that message across. He replaced Derek Adams, who was sacked back in February. And took Bradford in the end to 14th in the table, where they were pretty much equal number of points away from the playoffs and away from the drop zone. But they were aiming to push on from there this campaign. Yet to win this season, but they're very close to winning this cup time. Figueredo there. That was a big arm out, wasn't there? As that ball was delivered into the box. Figueredo being the man. It's Cannon. it forward now, Lewis thought about coming, vaulted it in the end, Bill helping it forward, McLaughlin, Slater loses it, and Bradford breaking forward with East, and East now, Angle, still Angle as he heading for the angle of the pitch near the corner, instead it's just a throw in. was the shout for the other handball and watch Figueredo's arm I thought he did catch him it definitely didn't He's got plenty of chest contact on that just to guide it back to his goalkeeper well as Andy Cook walks off it's probably a good time to ask you who your man of the match is Lee. yes I mean the player of the match for me certainly that man Andy Cook has worked tirelessly he deserves a nice little rest Watch. Hopefully Bradford go to victory. Two brilliant, two super goals. Even though he's had limited touches of the ball, showed how effective he is. If a Dane Oliver, the target man himself, signed from Gillingham. Bradford, his tenth club of his career. He's hanging around in the middle of that penalty area, waiting. Of course, but he won't come. It's going to be 
Holds Bull. We're in the 88th minute, and it's nerves time for the side in the lead. Well, is there a lesson being learned from the weekend where they conceded so late on in the game, didn't they? I didn't want to mention it. I know, but you have to. That was in the 90th 90, 90 time. We're not to the 91st minute just yet. Coville. Hope for hold still. Happened to Bradford at the weekend. Score though with these closing minutes. We will have a penalty shootout. I must say, I've been really impressed with Bradford City and the way they've set up. I just think they've looked really organized all the way through the game up until the 88th minute that we're on now. All across the pitch, they've worked hard as a unit, and that's so important. to that side and there you'll take that free kick and East in no rush and excellent from Ryan East showing the confidence in such a dangerous area where Colville comes tight and he just flicks it over his head excellent well you can see Shotter there talking with the fourth official that's six minutes seven He's getting no to all those answers, those questions. Let's see how many we get. Expecting five or so. Free kick to Hull. We want to get on with it. minutes Hull on the charge good ball in and almost put it to his own goal practice a cool kick there's a touch on there in the end as well he was a little bit frantic a bit too close for comfort Figueredo was forward oh it's excellent it's Wilkes just a cheekiness back heel coil what a ball this is as well that's where you want just to pin that big physical presence getting on the end of it really fortunate Defending. I think Platt was grateful not to make clean contact, and then Figueredo did. Five minutes more for Bradford to see out for a place in the second round. Five more minutes for Hull to find an equaliser and take this game to penalties. It's at the wrong end for them. Support. Oh, they've worked so hard off the ball, Bradford. Not allowing anything at all. A little bit of a tussle over on that right hand side with Dane Oliver. Really coil. Just moving his trailing leg. Oliver there to hold on to that ball, but it is back. With oh. Holt. 
This would be some result, wouldn't it, for Bradford City? The season they're looking to be successful in. This whole city side have certainly fielded a real strong side. Lots of credit. And again, there's that roar again. The ball run out of play by Wilkes. Well, we look at that clock. 93rd minute. And I think they're starting to believe. And why shouldn't they? They've been excellent. Defensively, they've chosen their times to go forward. As you can understand, they've got a championship side. Really coming and asking questions. Mark Hughes about to take his club. Just about call it his new club. His first full season with them. To a big cup for results. And their competition has meant so much to him in his career. Avalanche seeing the seconds tick away. But that will be the Tigers' ball. Derby, it's felt like a derby this one. It literally is. Now that can hold. Final lady equalizer for the best of Arriving, but Crickslow was there as well and doing enough to put him off. Oh, excellent ball in. Fast, efficient approach. Tete do brilliant. Elder's first time delivery and then he's just behind. As the Binyan bots, Critchlow, well, he's still got to get a bit nuisance, which he was and has been. There's some real, real big challenges. Critchlow's had some moments tonight. Display from the Loney defence. Hold up. Hold. Almost out of time, but they do have a free kick. And will they send the goalkeeper forward here? Or will the goalkeeper just take this free kick? Might be the last chance. Well, he's going to say, so if he goes forward, no one's going to take the kick, are they? <laughs> Figueredo's gone forward. So here we go. Is this the last chance for Hall to force a penalty shooter? Can Bradford see it off? Cannon. Has to get it in that box, and it's claimed by Lewis, and he will hold. Yes, every single man behind the ball, and... A big night for the Mantles. They've beaten their Yorkshire rivals from two leagues above and triumphed in this tussle of two cities. Mark Hughes delighted with the result tonight, a big Welsh flag in that stand as well. His side had fallen behind in this game. An own goal from Harry Lewis up the shot for two fans, but they turned it around. Andy Cook with two first half goals that did the business. One with his head, one with his foot. A brilliant performance in the end from Bradford and all the credit to them, Lee, after falling behind. Yeah, they were excellent. And credit to Mark Hughes and his Bradford City side. Every single one of them have worked so hard. Yes might not have seemed effective at times, but when they've had to produce, which they did, and that man, Andy Cook, brilliant. Two super goals, but all over the pitch. Lots of credit to a side that certainly can go places under Mark Hughes. Yes, quite a performance from Bradford tonight. They've overcome opponents that are ranked well above them. Quite the performance tonight. From Bradford City, they are through to the second round and winners at Valley Parade by two goals to one. What a proper cut tie that was, and there is uh, Bradford's hero who we will hear from.
surely and it is being celebrated here like a big big win by these Bradford fans and also you can see by the look on the faces of the Bradford players and Mark Hughes actually did win that at the end unbelievable he, top, he, he? well he was getting the crowd going on he could tell he was absolutely delighted with the result and, and, and hey listen the best team won on the night and you know, they worked hard they wanted a little bit more but you can tell by Sparky's face there can't you First win of the season, he's delighted, of course, he's come the expectation. It's the first upset of the, uh, the cup of this year. It is, it is, but, you know, what you're seeing at the moment, which is probably important right at the start of the season, is is that togetherness, aren't you? Spirit, that's what you need to be successful, and Matt Hughes knows that, he knows he needs the fans. You look at the atmosphere here, it's an incredible place to come and play your football, and you've... Mark knows that you've got to get the fans on your side, you've got to bring them in, you've got to get through the turnstiles. Him doing this after, it just brings it to connection together and it can bring success and that's what they need this season. Difficult to find a fault with Bradford, actually. Well, they showed, they showed the spirit, Mark, because they went 1-0 down early doors and then, you know, as you say there, the, the, the spirit that they've got and the togetherness. I tell you what, if you've got a good change, you've got a great chance. And you make that spirit. Yeah, of course you do. 14 new players, so it's going to take time. You you have a result like this, third game into the season, that's what you want. It breeds. He said before, winning gear breeds confidence, and they will go into the game at the weekend. Looking forward to it now. You can see there on Shota Avaladze's face, the disappointment. He's just walking down below us at the moment, gesturing to some of his players. He's, he's not a happy man as Mark Hughes is just about to walk down in front of us as well, still giving his thumbs up. Uh, to the crowd uh, we will hear from him very shortly as well all the Bradford players starting to file past and actually Alva is still still there this this ma this matters this isn't just going out of the first round we said that before there's expectations at football club and when you cross that white line when you set a team up to go and win a football match and you don't you're disappointed and you see that there he's still getting get his points across to Alair he's disappointed he hasn't won this football match uh, as he heads to the dressing room just to our left, down to our right, the player of the match is with Anna. Andy, congratulations. Cheers. What a night, what a turnaround against championship opposition as well. I mean, these are your best nights, aren't they, as a footballer? No, yeah, I mean, we, we've gone one down there and then we've got back in the game. Uh, we've obviously got the win in, in, in the next round, so everyone's happy. Both goals look like something off the training ground. We'll talk about the first one. Just take us through it, the way you stopped and really timed that header. You'd had a number of balls whipped in before that, but you got it right. Yeah, um, I've been in there, like, I'm always in there. Um, but I just, when you put it in, i just seen it going over, and so I've stopped and set back, and then I've, I've got on the end of it and got the goal. The second one, I've said it already, it looked like something straight off the training ground. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, obviously the ball's come in, and it's going to Young, and I, see, I got off in my, my mind, and I uh, just called it over, and I put it in the bottom corner. You'll be fuming with our statisticians at half-time after you scored two goals. A graphic came up that you'd had the fewest touches on the pitch, but just clinical. You made them count. Uh, I'm bothered. I've got two goals, so that's all that counts. But talk about the mentality of this side. Mark Hughes was saying you're a strong group here together yeah. to turn it round the way you did. How did you do that? No, I think the lads uh, showed, a bit, showed character. You know, obviously on, at the weekend we, we got beat by the last-minute goal. Um, I think the lads showed the character not to crumble and we've turned it around what can this do for the morale of this group because it is your first win of the season across all competitions no it's massive obviously we're going to take it into saturday and hopefully get a win then and give us a bit of an insight to working with mark hughes how's he getting the most out of you as a player no it's uh obviously he's on he's always on to us um and like i say we're working hard on the train train pitch every day just finally the draw tomorrow night there'll be some premier league teams in there anyone you fancy in particular no i'm not really bothered hopefully you get a premier league team but don't take it with her. Well, congratulations. You are player of the match. This is all yours. Uh, thank you. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> nice little cheer from the fans as well who are just over to the left. He's asked if he can go and he's going to go and have some photos with the fans there. Although, I don't think he's got much time for the statisticians. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll build the bridges with the Sky Sports statisticians <laughs> and he's off for the selfies. We will talk about his performance uh, before we go off air a little bit later on. Tomorrow night, we are at Hillsborough. Sheffield Wednesday against Sunderland. League One against Championship. That is going to be a huge game tomorrow. We're on air from seven, uh, and post-match, we will have the draw for the second round.
And at the moment, you can follow the journey of South London's football hopefuls in the new Sky Original One Shot, the Football Factory. All episodes are available now on Sky Documentaries. Well, it's been an impressive night for the home side here. Bradford coming from a goal down to beat Hull 2-1. You've heard from that man there, Andy Cook, player of the match, two in five minutes, and Mark Hughes' side are into the second round. We'll hear from both managers when we come back. Well, it started well for Hull, didn't it? Two fans shot brilliantly saved by Harry Lewis, but unluckily bouncing back off him to give the visitors the lead. But boy, did Bradford respond with two goals in quick succession, both from Andy Cook, fantastic header, first of all, and then five minutes from that well-worked routine from the short corner, he got his second, and Bradford are into tomorrow's second round draw. Here are the stats from the game. So, so much, I mean, so many things fairly level. Hull dominating the possession, but the attempts on goal equal. Bradford had more on target, they had more corners. The expected goals actually bang on the same, 0.68 each. Which proves the point that possession isn't everything. No, <laughs> the touches in the box, 21, the no touches in the box, and, and so has come from Cook. And he scored, he scored two. He never but touched it. He got a better stick. Well, you said, you said that, not me. It won't <laughs> me. But I, I said how important it was when he make, makes them goals. I thought it was magnificent tonight. His hold-up play, the way he brings players in. We said as a defender playing against Dino, uses his body, wins ball, flicks on. As a defender, it's a nightmare. And you, you saw with the goal, the header, one step in, he's moving, he just guides it into I thought it was an all-round great performance from him. We'll go back to the whole go first of all, because we've seen how disappointed Chateau Avaladze is after that. There'll be positives that he can take from the goal and what, how he's trying to get Hull to play. Well, you've seen that in the first half. It changed in the second because it changed formation, they're chasing the game. Um, but here, the ball through from uh, McLaughlin. That's where he wants to find on the back foot. And then Randon Williams here, playing right wing back. Yes, he's left footed, wants to come inside. He gets to the byline here, pulls back. Good decision, don't just put the ball in the box, try and manipulate it, move it, he does. Two fan. Yes, he gets very fortunate there. Harry Lewis makes a great save, tips it onto the bar. He needs some luck. Well, he, all, he you, have to, all you ask him to do is hit the target. Is it the target? He's pulled off a, an unbelievable save, but then it's just hit him on the back and gone in. Got and them. at that stage, actually, they, they'd been under the cosh in terms of possession. They hadn't had a yeah. lot of the ball. Bradford at, at that stage. Yeah, they sat, they sat off. They, they sat off. They obviously, they had the, the, the two banks that they couldn't get through. But listen, what response? You know, we just spoke about it off air there. You know, the togetherness that Bradford showed second half, and there was the better side se second half, and, 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 and obviously, you know, delighted to take the win because they did play a better second half. I think that was a first shot from two fans, and I think that was credit to the way Bradford set up. Matt Hughes knows he, it's a championship team with good players who. At the back, the back three take the ball, they put the ball at risk, and he was patient. He goes, try and break us down, and they found it hard. Yeah, mm. they get fortunate with the goal there. Because I'm guessing sometimes in a cup tie, if you're the lower league side, patience is actually quite hard to carry out because you're pumped up and you're wanting to go at them. You are when you're at home. You're, yeah. you're in front of your own crowd. They don't just want you to sit in, and they didn't do that. I think the game, the way they played, they're trying to try to press. Certainly, Jake Greaves, McLaughlin, Alfie Jones at the back because of, no, Dobbs, Robbins, Robson. I thought in in the uh, goal, he tried to play. He tries to get in the middle of the park to Cannon. That's how they play. So they were patient. I thought they were. And they had perfect. more pressure. They had more pressure, mm. Bradford, because they haven't won this season. Yeah. Do you know? So that's the most pressure. And obviously, there, you, know, you saw you saw Mark Hughes at the end. Absolutely delighted with the win. Absolutely delighted. Praised Andy Cook a lot, but I know you want to praise the ball in for the first goal oh, as it's well. It's incredible. No, centre forward's dream, to be quite honest with you. But as you say there, we, we spoke before the game, he's in the box all the time, and that's where he gets his goals from. That's where he got 12 goals last year. But look, it's just, just his little bit of movement, you know, and it's the pace is on the cross, as I said, and then he just guards it like you tell kids. Always had the ball back from where it comes from and the keeper's no chance. Great ball by Halliday, absolutely fantastic. You put it in an area when you've got a centre forward who likes to use his head good in the air, it's going to cause centre-half yeah. problems and he did that. Yeah. Could McLaughlin do anything different there? Go back go back to that body position and, and go in and stop him? Because it's really interesting. Cause it, 
to the to the amateur eye, it just looks like he gets caught under the ball, but there's more to it. He than does, that. Matt, and I think that comes down to Andy Cook early on in the game. He's winning balls. He just Andy Cook makes mm. one step forward, yeah. so McClough and thinks I've got to go and win the ball. As soon as you make as a defender, you make make that run, and you don't get enough leverage, get enough height of your jump. And Andy Cook just he just steps one step back, it goes over his head, guides it. It's a fantastic. Well, they header. always say, they always say centre forwards are always kept told that they want to try getting in between the two centre halves, and that, as you say, it's not. He's not done much. He's just stu stood off. One step, that all it is. One step it. forward, you and move off back. Great header. He was a master. He's coming into uh, yeah. shows again. There he, he is. is. Yeah. Pushed in yeah, yeah. 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 As a centre forward. I, 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 I have certain I have certain demands, and it's you have to stand next to oh, me. Right. You can't, okay, you yeah, can't yeah. just go on there. Um, you know, it's an obvious thing to say, but you look absolutely delighted at the end. Yeah, I, I thought it was a really good performance. Obviously, going behind against the team from a couple of divisions higher, we, it was uh, it was a setback for us. But I thought we we recognised what we needed to do on the pitch. We needed to get closer to people. We needed to have a little bit more intensity to our play. We probably showed a little bit too much respect to Hull initially, and we couldn't get really get a foothold on the game. But uh, after that, after we understood that, then uh, I thought we were excellent. Well, like a real connection at the end. Yeah, they're, they're a great group. And I have to say, the, the Bradford public have been fantastic since I've come here, really um, welcomed me to the city and, and to the club. And uh, it was great that we've been able to give them a good night. What really pleased you about your performance tonight? Well, tonight it was a different performance from us. Um, at League Two level, we, we normally uh, dominate possession. Um, have plenty of the ball uh, today was different obviously we we're against a high class team and uh, weren't in possession of the football as much as we we're, we're used to but uh, we had to show the other side of our game and that was about getting around people and making sure that we uh, we could uh, affect the game and i thought we did that really well mark how happy if uh, andy cook <laughs> It was brilliant, I could keep blessing. New I mean, sign in, you know, you know, yeah, yeah, you know your stuff, you two guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, in fairness, I thought he was great today. Not, not only the goals, because obviously the, that's the talking point from his game, but um, just his general play and his, and he will always cause problems for, for yeah. defenders. He's, he's a real handful and he's, he's come back really strong in pre-season, looked really good and um, yeah, he's reaping the benefit. He was a handful tonight, he really, really as a centre-half, know what you come up against. It. You centre-forwards, <coughs> it's not what you want to play against, it really, really well, he isn't. He wins every header. Here he Mike, is. He? he wins every header, he backs in, he stops centre-halves heading the ball and yeah. then he's always in the box when the ball's in the wide areas, that's what yeah. I love. Yeah, I mean, he's... He's a big, strong boy, um, as you said, gets, gets in line with the ball, protects the ball when he can, and he yeah, takes goals. Uh, has always scored goals throughout his career, at whatever level he's played at. So I was really pleased for him today. He, he, was, a, he was a really great, I mean, this is a great header. Yeah. I mean, he's done that throughout his career. Uh, and when the ball came over, great ball, obviously. Um, is that it, a training ground? No, of course, of course <laughs> it was. <laughs> I'll give you a prayer down there. Yeah. I think Cookie just shouted loudest. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, I mean, that was a really good short corner routine. Huh? Yeah, we, we've always said if um, if you see the opportunity to do it, um, two v one, then we always encourage the lads to do it. Um, top end of the pitch, you need to be creative sometimes. Mm. Do something a little bit off the cuff, and it, on occasions it'll come off for you like it did tonight. Would it be fair to say that you quite like centre forwards who put themselves about a bit, cause problems for defenders? <laughs> I don't know what you're getting. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but it, actually, it is what it is. But yeah. actually, his experience and how he knows the game then encourages the young players that you have behind him yeah. as well. Yeah, without a doubt, uh, I've got some really good experience guys in the group, but I've got young talent as well, so they're going to need guidance obviously throughout the season. It's we're only right at the beginning of it, so we've got a long season ahead of us. But uh, it's a good start, so we'll enjoy it tonight. Um, and, and we spoke about what happened on Saturday uh, pre briefly, briefly pre-match, yeah. but immediately that resets that, doesn't it? I mean, it cancels that disappointment out. Well, on, only if we go out and have a similar performance at the weekend mm. and get three points on the board. That's obviously our aim this year, is to try and get out of League Two if we can. This club's been in in this league for too long and uh, we need to have a real goal this year. And finally, because th the first rule of talking to managers in August is what happens for the rest of the window? You've been so busy already. You, are you continuing to be busy until it finishes? I would say, yeah, I've always said that if, if something uh, pops its head up and you, you think, well, goodness me, we're going to have to pursue that if we can, if it's the right deal, uh, the right player for, for the right money, then uh, we'll still try. But uh, we're probably done, if I'm honest. All right. Well, we're done as well. Thank you very much for joining us. I promise I'll leave you alone for a while okay. now. Cheers, Mark. Okay, Thank you. Care.
Well done. Congratulations. Uh, Mark Hughes with us. Uh, coming up, we'll get reaction from the whole camp as well. Show us out of the lads. Eh? What a contrasting difference, uh, contrasting emotions. Uh, we'll hear from him next.